Hi everyone, Simon from Horma Studio. Today I wanted to do a teardown for a pretty old project that I saw on my hard drive recently. I was like, ah, oh, I almost forgot about this, this nightmare. So um, we'll get started. I think the thing I want to talk most about is actually kind of the, the context and how it went because it was a very, very bad project, but a very like a very bad first experience that at the same time I learned quite a lot of like how I want to get clients from there, etc. So I won't focus too much on the actual images. They're not that bad, but they're not that good either. Uh, but it's more like uh, I want to be a little bit more transparent on how things went so that you can hopefully not do the same if it ever happens to you or if you feel like it's ever going to happen to you. So yeah, let's have a look. So the images were for a sort of cabin. Uh, let's just take some notes here. Uh, so there was like cabin in Norway along like a very nice like location was pretty amazing. The client sent me like drone footages that in the end were completely useless, but still uh, it was fun to have them. There was like a bathroom that was pretty bad. The exterior, as you can see, like, like the design was pretty like, I don't know, um, not my cup of tea, but still, but uh, plenty of stuff to play with, with the, the surroundings. Um, well, this is the same one, sorry. Uh, another type of framing here that was quite nice. Uh, sorry. Uh, here for like a sort of zoom bedroom, it was pretty random. And another exterior one that was pretty, well, not that amazing either. So yeah, as I was saying, what was interesting was really regarding not the project, which was pretty like not really amazing, uh, but more regarding the actual way it worked or the way things went. So one thing to say first is that the project I did it or I got the commission through a platform, which uh, is called, I think, Render That. Maybe it changed name now. And one thing that I didn't understand, so funny thing first regarding the pricing is that um, I told them how much I wanted for uh, like per image, and for some reason they understood it was like the price for the five or six images that was they were after, and I was like, no, not really. So we re what's the word? Uh, renegotiated a price that was like way below what I wanted to charge at first. And the funny thing is that it didn't really occur to me at the time that uh, like they were very cheap clients, and it was like already not off a good start. So I was like, well, yeah, that's fine. Let's just still work. I wasn't having like that much. Um, work at the time, it was 2016, I think I was still working uh, in a firm in Paris. So this was on my side, um, like free time or whatever. Um, so yeah, pricing wise, it was already a pretty big nightmare. But I was like, this is like for five or six images, I don't even remember. It should go quite quickly. Uh, I was counting like on maybe two weeks or three weeks top because they seem to be not super reactive. So still, it was doable and I was like, it's fine if we do, like it's just a, let's say a month and I'll be done with it. But that's not how it happened. One of the main thing that happened regarding this, uh, working on this platform and that was like actually the main issue that I had was that I was not dealing directly with the client. And while this is already at the time something I was really, uh, like I knew it was a bad thing and I was always quite aware of like not having it happen. Uh, for some reason, it's sort of like, has been imposed on me and I couldn't do much about it. But this is something I really want you to be uh, like to understand based on like this and uh, like this whole story is that it is very like there's a huge discrepancy in the result if you're not dealing directly with your client uh, because you never know like the like the what's the middleman doing, how he or she is telling your like the story and how things are presented, etc. And it is very important to have a direct discussion with the end client. Otherwise, everything can change all the time and you don't really know exactly what is happening. And if the the person doing the intermediary is not really bringing back the information properly, you actually can't even work with that. So that's something to be very wary of is that you have to deal all the time directly with the client. On that project, I couldn't. And like I could, in terms of uh, like uh, the way you work, it's day and night and it's like horrible and you can't really actually work pro like productively and actually like 
enjoy working. So that was one of the big things. The other thing was regarding uh, like going through this platform and not being able to deal with them directly was also a nightmare in terms of time frame because for some reason, even though for me it's like common sense that when I send an email, I can expect an answer within, I don't know, maximum 24 hours, especially when you sort of write it directly in the email, like, uh, please reply within blah, 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 like tomorrow or whatever. And I would literally wait, I don't know, three, four or five days to get an, an answer with like very shitty feedback, even though I was asking for specific feedback, like, can you tell me um, like what type of materials you're using here? Can you send me photograph references? Are you happy with this type of framing? Or do you think you need like more of the context or whatever, etc.? And even though it's like in retrospect questions, I would never actually ask nowadays to a client because I usually take that this type of decisions because they present to me the, the project and I sort of like from there start and take the decision of what should be shown. And then I explain to them why we should show it that way and why we shouldn't have like more context or less context or et cetera. So this was like, yeah, very big, messy. Uh, uh, I won't, that's the thing. I can't even call it a collaboration because I don't, I didn't even have a client. I was just dealing with the, the middle guy, which was uh, kind of funny when you think about it. And so, yeah, like having this, uh, like very slow pace was extremely stressful because when you start a project thinking it's going to take two or three weeks uh, in the end, I think it took, I think I started in September and we finished in March. So I don't even want to count because I'm going to start to cry how long it took, but it was horrible and it took like a lot of time and all the feedback was so useless that we needed extra, uh, what's the word extra like revisions that I was willing to make in the sense that I didn't want to deliver shitty images or at least I wanted to do the best I could uh, at the time. But at the same time, it was like I'm undercharging uh, since the very beginning and they're taking like so much time. It's very, very bad. So that's kind of like uh, the whole thing and before I kind of like have a better look at the images to show you how it went. It's kind of the all these sort of topics I want you to be aware of uh, when you're starting a project is that to really be in direct contact with the client, be extremely precise on your expectations. There is no such thing as like common sense when you're working with the client because everybody has their own like common sense. And for you, maybe it makes it's normal to expect uh, like answers within 12 hours, 24 hours. Maybe for your clients, it doesn't make sense to reply uh, before like uh, before uh, five days for their project or your email because they have other stuff to do. So you have to always be very clear on your expectations and how you want to work. And uh, as I was saying in some other videos, I think if you are clear with the client and they are not clear or are saying that it's not gonna work like that, I would advise to, uh, to not work with them or to overcharge in the sense that you know it's gonna be a mess, you know it's not gonna be fun to work on it, so you at least want to make money out of it because otherwise there's literally nothing that is gonna motivate you later down the road when the only thing you want is to, for the project to be done. So if at least you can be like, I'm gonna make a bit of more money than usual on this one, it's fine. So yeah, let's get started with the actual images now. So uh, if we look at couple of things. Here are some clay renderings that I sent at some point just to show like different point of views that could be interesting. There was two types of cabins, so they had to be shown sometimes separately, sometimes together. Uh, so these are like very, very rough uh, interiors and exteriors that I did at the beginning. They're up course not that good. One thing to know that is fun is that I remember that back then I didn't know, I didn't have forest back for some reason, either it didn't exist, but I'm pretty sure it existed, or I didn't know about it. So all the scattering was done like manually and it was very funny. The research here is more like uh, some sort of like stuff that I sent. So here you can see it's starting to be textured and very noisy because I was rendering off of uh, Mac Pro, I think back then. Uh, here are some images. The, there was like ways of making nice images. It's just that back then I was very like, I was just starting, so it was not really crazy. And uh, I still knew like how to detail stuff. I think it came from the, what's the word? Like, like being an architect and sort of like working and knowing like how things work. I was sort of trying to model stuff realistically uh, because I don't think they, they even gave me the model. That was the funny part, I think, is that 
I had to do everything and I wasn't even charging the right thing. Um, but yeah, a lot of potential nice point of views. I'm not going to show you like the drone footage because I, I don't even know where they are. They are probably lost in the, the whole folder thing. But um, there was, yeah, potential for nice images. And if the final ones are like, they're decent, as you will see in a second. Uh, final, this is like, just before sort of like finalizing. So it's like the final point of views that we sort of went for. So there was really this idea of like the project being open on several uh, like uh, directions, etc. One thing that is fun is that I can't even pretend that there was a lot of thought in the composition in the sense that there was a lot of thought because I was already like doing a lot of photography and understanding how things can be interesting, etc. But I was really using uh, sort of like very like uh, just feeling it, if I may say. Nowadays, I have a way more thoughtful and uh, let's say almost unbiased approach to composition because I know how I want things to feel, how I want things to be read, etc. Right now, like not right now, back then, I would be more like, uh, yeah, this looks okay. Let's let's go with this. And that would be it. So the result is not like necessarily bad because if you have a sort of feel of like what, like how things work and if they look nice or not, it's it's fine, but still. So you can see this was one of the image. This was probably another one. I'm not sure we kept it to be honest. This was, uh, this one was bad, but like the, the, the overall space was actually very shitty and like really poorly designed. So there was no way of making like actual good images of this. There was for some reason and like a bathroom pick. I think it's the, the only bathroom, not this one, like, because we didn't even keep this uh, point of view, which was very bad. I think it's the only bathroom image I did in my whole life. And I th hope it's the last one because this was a very boring subject or like, uh, yeah, there there's always like, I shouldn't say that. There are ways of doing like any, uh, what's the word? any topic can be interesting. It's just that uh, you have to make sure that you're dealing with the right client to make them interesting because otherwise some people have very boring approach to boring project and boring subject and then you end up with boring images. They can be technically accurate, but they're still shitty images. This one was kind of okay-ish. Uh, this one we didn't keep and this one was like a zoom, but we did it differently. So if we look at each image individually, I don't really keep the, I don't think I have all the, the process, unfortunately. This one is fun. This, yeah, was okay. It was like this idea of like at least showing the specificities of the climate in Norway. So this was okay. Unfortunately, I've never been to Norway. So uh, I was basing everything off of photographs and I think like the feel was not that good. And back then I was dealing with colors uh, a little bit less naturally. So everything was a bit more saturated which I think doesn't fit the actual uh, thing. But the framing itself is actually quite interesting. You have something quite dynamic with this and like the, the weird shape of the project and you can still read this. So I think it was a decent shot considering I started like about a year uh, earlier than this. So that's, that's, that's decent, let's say. This is the amazing bedroom. Um, not much to, ch yeah, there was something like, I don't know. The funny thing is that they didn't ask me like what you would expect, which is like, can we use like a 12 millimeter focal length in order to see the whole thing? And I think it could have been actually an interesting thing to do to have like more, to open more the focal, uh, like open more the aperture or whatever, focal length. But um, it's, this is just a bad image. All the, like all the, the mapping is wrong, etc. The textures are not very that good because, well, I was just starting out, so I didn't have like much um, knowledge on where to get uh, decent textures, etc. So that's that. And everything was looking very, very cheap, basically. So yeah, not very, not a very interesting shot, or I would even say a pretty boring shot. This one is nice because I managed to keep it very, uh, what's the word, dramatic, if I may say. Uh, with this guy about to commit suicide. So this was a uh, this was a fun fun image. I think it sort of lacks something happening. Um, like it could have been nice to contrast the sort of uh, light here with something maybe happening here, or like at least having like the the sort of uh, there was a stair here that maybe could have been like lit so that you have a sort of point of interest happening here and something happening here. But overall, the the actual image was okay. I think. Uh, the framing itself is nice because it could have been nice to maybe 
have a sort of depth of field in the foreground and have like maybe uh, like a sort of rock in the in the foreground here and maybe better uh, what's the word? like grass uh, models etc but overall it was uh, it was interesting I think one thing also that could have been interesting I think is that we have a sun here that is setting and it could have been nice to have like this sort of uh, like shimmering thing that you usually have with like the sort of like very nice reflection of the sun setting and this on the sort of lake that we had this had here sorry but this didn't happen another i'll just have a look one second okay it's the same i yeah, really don't have the evolution unfortunately here was quite nice this shot so it was the one from earlier one thing i don't like is the colors of the inside it's like it's a weird yellow that doesn't work with the rest of the image what i do like though is the sort of uh, patchwork of colors that we have here so it looks quite nice here you can see everything was a bit dead here it's a bit better even though we have like weird stuff happening here and the vegetation is very dark so here it's okay because it's uh, it's more like grass and high grass and stuff like that here well the trees it's not really that good looking so kind of not the like the natural lighting is okay artificial lighting i think is completely off in terms of color mainly in terms of temperature so that was one thing but the framing itself i think is nice and you have like the nice uh, what's the word like uh, the sort of trail here etc one thing that is fun also is that there are like there's zero cars anywhere whereas they kind of like could have made sense to have them some point like have like a sort of truck here or whatever but yeah i guess i didn't have models of cars anyway back then this one i quite like even though the cars are not that natural uh again this is maybe a bit too dark so it could have been slightly lit up a little but maybe it's actually okay i like the sort of uh red uh, dot here or like the little kid because it does catch your eye quite a lot and sort of like helps you in focusing more on the view than on the actual project because the project in this type of setting is almost secondary like what you're selling as a property developer is more like the, the, the nearness of the of the lake etc rather than the actual project even though the project can be considered nice if you like this type of architecture but still Again, what was nice, I think, already uh, was the sort of like uh, fluffiness of the, the vegetation. Maybe it could be a little bit better, but at least it was already like having the sort of like patches, etc. So this was looking uh, pretty nice. You have like the dad here with another kid. So all in all, this is a, a decent, uh, decent point of view, I think. Just the, the sky here, there's a little bit burned here and I don't like that. There are some weird artifacts happening here that suddenly it gets super dark and you don't really know why. But, and one thing maybe that is also a bit uh, weird is that you can see here that you have like shadows and for some reason this would probably mean that this sun is coming that way so this actually should be in the shadow somehow and it is not. So there's like a sort of inconsistency with the, the light I'm not I'm not really sure of how the light is working in this image but this is a uh, this is not really that good bathroom shot ah, actually I thought we kept it frontal but in the end we still have this like that it was this very very bad uh, image well I'd, I'm not even sure it's the final one because I think at some point we had to add like sort of like backlit thing that was looking very bad uh, you can see here that some stuff are like burnt. This looks almost like as if it was photoshopped and I'm actually wondering if it's photoshopped or not because it very, really looks bad. This is looking bad as well. Uh, colors are weird. I mean, this is a very bad shot uh, of a pretty... I think like this is slates. So this is actually an interesting material. There was some play with like reflection here that was already starting that could be fun. I'm sort of like missing the edge um, thickness of the the window pane here that could not the window but like glass pane panel here that could be interesting. But uh, overall, this is uh, you can see though that here for some reason I was starting to get like very strong distortion. What you want to do when you're dealing with very shallow space, not shallow but like um, like small spaces is to at least try to keep it frontal because then your distortion are less noticeable if you go with like very short focal length 
if on the other hand you have like a two-point perspective then everything is going like haywire and like yeah this doesn't look natural at all and it doesn't look good especially in such a small spa space sorry so that's it and i think there is the living room which was okay-ish uh, actually there was another one that i don't have here i oh, know it's because i have two of them my bad so there was this guy that was cute actually i quite like it there's definitely like you can see the the texture here is very very flat uh i think back then i didn't know how to use like glossiness properly so i had like just a um like a, a really uh, just like a, a color not an actual map inside so this can show you the difference um the overall outside i think is okay this was too saturated uh this is kind of like a pretty shitty model that i used but I didn't have much more options back then. So that's it. But overall, an interesting, um, an interesting image, I think. And the last one was this guy. Pretty, pretty okay. One thing that was problematic with this one um, was that there was like this sort of weird design for the cupboard and the kitchen in general, and they wanted it to be visible. So actually, in retrospect, I guess it would have been nice to have some sort of artificial lighting that sort of uh, emphasized this area. For some reason, I really wanted to go full natural light. Uh, also, one thing that is kind of stupid is that this uh, decent looking uh, fireplace is not casting any type of uh, warmth. So it could have been nice to have like some sort of highlights every now and then on the, on the floor and on whatever in order to have like this sort of um, Basically the contrast between the outside that could have been a bit cold and the inside that uh, could have been a bit warmer. So that's that's the idea, I think. So yeah, that will be it for this project. Uh, as I said, like the images are not that bad. They're not that good either. Uh, definitely worse. I think there was like way more potential, but it was this was like five years ago. So I was just started. So. Definitely not the best. Uh, I was not at the top of my game, where I'm still not at the top of my game at all anyway. But the idea of what I really want you to understand or get from this video is really this idea of like how the setup and like the sort of like context that you're working in is actually very important. It's very important to be in direct contact with your client, to have like decent feedback uh, in terms of like um, like the, the time frame and to really be transparent on what are your expectations. And I think to sort of stick to your guns when you know it's not gonna go the way you want and to say, well, actually, I don't want to work with you. Or as I said earlier, is to recharge uh, accordingly because you know it's gonna be a very annoying project. So yeah, that will be it. Uh, hopefully you've learned some interesting stuff in this video and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers, bye.